Oh, and here's the end of this railway. just found a nice little spot beside this bubbling brook in town or on the edge we're still looking for our way out we have our sausage roll there's all your runoff from the hills that's called the rusty river and that short of Unpacked. What's, he, what's the duck got short of? Pardon? He's short of a head. <laughs> not right in the head. Not, not right in the head, that duck. The great man, Maccabi Diva, jumped away well. Gray's in, looked a touch slow. Eye popper began well. So did Strasbourg, the merger, Lachlan River. Oh, it's three o'clock, way down Strawn, some of the little ports, just listening to the Melbourne Cup. Maccabi Diva has won it from over Excellent. Yeah, Maccabi Diva won for the third time. Maybe we can do an El Tupo cruise rather than the, the fine dining one. Just looking. We booked our boat and train ride. Talked to a guy about the horses at one. And there's all the, the boats ready to go for their cruises. It's a bit similar to the one we might go on. There's all the Queenstown, New Zealand type uh, gentrification, fixing it all up. And you can rent a little house here. We're just walking back from the caravan park. Found a nice one, had a chat with Frank and Denise from Queensland, oh Sydney actually, uh, and Queensland. People swimming in the river, we booked our boat cruise and booked our train ride. Just walking around to our fish and chips. Wednesday morning we're going for a Gordon River cruise. I think it's this little cat here, Lady Franklin Jane. That's the one there, the white one. Yeah. 
20 degrees. There's the old pub where they were all gathered yesterday to hear Mac and what was it called, the horse? Tidy Diva, one for the third time. Mm -hmm. Covering, on board, there's now four. There's uh, one as you go off the main deck onto the forward deck. The forward deck. The forward deck, one on the back. Southern Ocean back there behind us on the that would come a day as you know as far as the to the harbour this size anyway. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to get back up to speed. Make your way down to one of the fish farms. Hope you see. This boat we can see in front of us with a water cannon is feeding the fish. They feed them a pellet to form a food. 
Now what I'm going to do with these people inside, I'll spin left hand side first, but just keep the, on the foredeck up there, just keep that stairway clear. I don't want to have any problems there. So they introduce the pellet form of food into that water flow. And they just spray it around, very good method of feeding the fish. Now, for that, well, while we're on this angle, you can actually see the name of the vessel on the back there. Fish Tucker Chucker. <laughs> sort of watch how you say that. So you can see the fish boiling up to the surface. So they'll feed them uh, a bit like us, maybe two to three times a day. here on the west and southwest coast of Tasmania, nowhere else. There's no cutting of the timber anymore. Not that you'd want to, hopefully. But there's plenty of left in the forest. And there's plenty in stock for us to use as well. Some examples of this, stockpiling. They're still uh, collecting timber out of the Gordon River. National Parks personnel collect it and it floods out into Porihawa. For the mine, so there's literally thousands of tons of timber lying on the kids, on the kids, kids, on the kids, kids, kids. Does that make sense? No. We've got some samples of that methyl you can on board, some human pine. We've got other timbers to look at, things to touch, taste, and smell. But I'm going to be quiet so you can enjoy this incredible, uh, incredibly calm day on the Gordon River. Let you listen to the bird life. Relax.
silence for a little while. sides of that. Now the beetles are in two different forms at the moment but the easiest way to pick them out is that they're only tree in the forest at the moment with a coppery tinge to their foliage, browny coppery colour. Not all of them but you can certainly see some browny tinges in, some in amongst their foliage. It's almost a pink coloured timber. Another tree you might have heard about is this, this has got, got any fish. Grows above the 200 metre level, but I can't show you that one. We also have whitey wood, native laurel, tea trees, the manuka and melaluca. You'll see you quite a few dead trees in the forest as well. Some of them are quite large, left and right, you can see them. Oh, okay. Bored and star. These trees are dead myrtles. There's a little beetle called the platypus beetle that bores its way into the myrtle tree. It eventually cuts the sap and flow off to the timber and it eventually kills it. Then they just stand there dormant in the forest till they rot away or get blown over. out of this area was by using the Gordon River, the river systems. They block and tackle systems that drag the logs from deep in the forest to the riverbanks. You can see how dense the forest is today, it must have been incredibly hard work. They had to work their way further and further up other rivers like the Franklin River, Rocky Spring, Dennis and Olga, further and further up those. Directly off our right hand side now, the Bushmen built a log boom using large logs end on end using steel cable and staples attached to a tree on the right, back on the left. Now the bushmen, before they pushed their logs into the rivers, used to put an identification mark on their logs with something like used to brand cattle with a hot iron, using steel cable and staples to make or create rafts of hue and pine. The largest raft was around half a mile long, taking over two days to get it back to Strawn. Now when they got their raft back to Strawn, they could identify their logs from the branding they put on them before they'd even push them into the mills. Then they could sell them off to the mills or use it for whatever they were going to use it for. They used to use human wine with everything. Overcast days are sometimes even better than sunny days. Now, another tree that grows everywhere in the forest that you might have heard of is the blackwood tree, Tasmanian blackwood. It's almost a reddy colour when it's varnished and lacquered up. Beautiful timber for furniture making, of course, arts and crafts. You can see this is uh, not much soil in the forest, a lot of it's washed away. But you can see a couple of little land fern right down in the water, about 10 metres up in the middle. This root structure obviously can get totally washed. So eventually that one, the first one. 
another example coming up for those of you in the bow now. So the man fern going beautifully down the bottom with the branches and twigs and sticks and dirt and dust and everything else. Probably the way, another nature going beautifully. But eyes left as we go around this corner. Probably pretty good going around here, which it is today. Pretty good, I say. Almost get used to it, I suppose. Don't. <laughs> It's not like spectacular today. I must have to show you the ground. The trees we can see just off our left hand side with the white flower. No whitey ones. You'll see the whitey wood flowering in the forest once we get to heritage in a minute too. Wharfs directly ahead. This is where we're stopping for our rainforest walk. Go for it with the photos because once we come up and correct the uh, reflections. Now, who's going to be around the track? Andrew, I think. Uh, I want to take the jacket. There's emergency gold shows on board. It'll be beautiful. We filmed some of the myrtle as we sailed by. Mm. It was very coppery coloured on the tree tops. See that one's got lots.
On, on, moving, see, on top of the log? Yeah. yeah. See where the... It's, it's all looped up. On the top. Oh, it's looped up. Oh, yes, it's, it's not long enough. No, I was looking for something long enough. It's not, it's all looped up. But it's, um, yeah. And what grade is this one? That's a party. Cool. Now what's that log stump of? It's a myrtle. Oh right.